Hi, my name is Rob. I'm from LittleElephantLatheCuts.com. Today I'm going to talk to you about lathe cuts, why the quality on our lathe cuts are better than the typical lathe cut, and then we'll just cut a record and I'll show you the process and how we make each individual record. Right. When you hear the term lathe cut record, that does not necessarily mean bad sounding record. There are a lot of different things that factor into getting true quality grooves. First of all, our records are cut records, not embossed records. Embossed records are records where the plastic is actually pushed into itself. Ours are cut out, sucked up from our vacuum, and put into our receptacle behind the lathe. The only way to get true quality grooves is by cutting out the record itself. Secondly, all of our records are cut in stereo, not mono. Most lathe cut companies only offer their records cut in mono. A major aspect of the music listening experience is it being in stereo. Thirdly, and most importantly, we use a feedback cutter head on our lathe. Feedback cutter heads are much more sought out in the vinyl cutting industry. Feedback cutter heads actually have the signal pass through a preamp before it gets to the head. That preamp EQs the signal in real time before cutting the grooves on your record. Ultimately what that means is higher, louder cuts and less distortion on your record. Alright, so uh, we're about ready to cut a record here. Um, the very first thing that we have to do, um, after cutting each record, we always clean the stylus. Um, because particles, plastic particles from the record can get onto the stylus. So, um, in order to get rid of those particles that are on there, we just use a Q-tip with a little bit of acetone on it. Acetone dissolves plastic, but does not dissolve diamond. So it's a perfect cleaner for our stylus, which is underneath the head. So um, once we've cleaned the stylus off, we're all ready to start um, getting the blank ready. So we first peel off the protective film that's on the blank. Throw that away. And since I just pulled that layer of plastic off of the blank. We have a static fan that uh, is above the lathe here that gets rid of, it has an, an ionizing, um, it's an ionizing fan, which gets rid of static um, off of the surface of the disc, off of the surface of the lathe. Um, we're constantly combating s static, so. All right. Next up, we need to uh, set our gap times for the record. This one in particular only has three songs, so this one will be pretty quick. We have it all set up through a tablet system. All right, so the entire session is only five minutes and 35 seconds for this one. Pretty quick for an LP. Uh, once we have our gap time set, I always make sure that our levels are set correctly. They're looking pretty good. This one's been pre-EQ'd and pre-mastered, so I already know about where to set the levels. Uh, if it was a, uh, a different session or a different album, I would be messing around with these things a little bit more than usual, but since I've already cut this one a, a number of times, I already know what's going on here, so. Um, everything runs through Pro Tools. We do lots of we do whatever EQ we need to do, um, uh, mastering work that we need to do before it hits our our head. So, obviously, vinyl records are 
a different type of medium than a, a burn CD or whatever. It, you can't have the same type of frequency range as you can with a CD or, or an MP3. Um, vinyl is, um, it, it responds differently to different frequencies, so you have to be aware of those things. So once we have our levels set, we're all good with those. We basically turn this thing on and get it ready to go. This is our heat lamp here. It uh, it warms the surface of the blank, um, obviously. So uh, basically makes the, the blank a little bit easier to cut uh, for the needle uh, that's underneath the head here. So uh, we'll turn on our needle heat here. We're pretty much good to cut once it's up to temperature, which it almost is. While it's getting up to temperature, I have to, this is anti-static wax, which is also just turtle wax, but we use it for, um, we, we apply it to the blank prior to cutting. And it helps to combat static, just like the ionizing pan does. So we are obviously constantly in uh, anti-static, hopefully anti-static environment. Um, yeah, so now that our gaps are set, temperature should be good, looks good. We got our needle heat on. Um, I think we're about ready to start cutting. So uh, on our software, we just have an auto cut record function. One more blast of the anti-static fan. The head drops on its own. And right onto the surface of the record. Pretty soon uh, our space bar pusher <laughs> <laughs> goes on its own. And uh, now the music's begun. And here we are, we sit here like I said, this session is five minutes and 35 seconds or so. So that's how long we sit here. But as we speak, grooves are being cut into what was a totally blank piece of plastic. And now there's grooves and there's music. It's all happening before our eyes. Um, like I was talking about before, we have a whole vacuum system that cuts out the chip. So the, ne the needle beneath the head actually cuts the record out and then there's a vacuum system that sucks out the chip and all, it all comes into this receptacle back here. And uh, that's where all the chip goes. So eventually, obviously, after many cuts, we have to clean that receptacle out and just throw it in the trash or maybe we'll sell it or something, I don't know. <laughs> but yeah, other than that, we got um, our lathe going. It's in autopilot right now. We have to babysit it to make sure that there's no problems. There's a lot of problems that can happen. Um, and then Within the next couple seconds here, we'll have our first gap happen, which happens automatically on our lathe. That's not true on all lathes, but uh, since we have a, a computer-driven lathe, we are able to set our gap times prior to actually starting the cut. So, um, yeah, it's, it's almost there here. Almost done with song one of three. Here it comes. All right. Gap one, there it is. It has begun and now song two has started. So obviously if you were to get our 
you know, if you were to have your band or uh, whatever cut with, with us, we would, you know, program them into our software and then we would have the gap times at the exact right moment. We always have to make sure that everything's still good. So just like I was in the very beginning stages, I have to make sure that this temperature's still at the right uh, level because obviously this is a heat lamp that, and this is a black record, so, so uh, you know, temperature gets absorbed through the black record and I have to make sure that uh, the temperature is still correct. At the moment, it, it always changes, but at the moment I'm looking for about 100 degrees on the surface of the record. So that changes throughout the course of the stylus life. Everything's still looking good, I right know. All right, that's the end of the second song. Pretty short LP right now. Here's the, the gap for the second song. There it is. All right, song three has begun. And obviously we can do multiple, uh, on a 12 inch we can do multiple tracks, just like just like any other LP that you have that you have in your collection or whatever, it's at least 22 minutes for sure per side on an LP. And once this whole thing is done, the uh, lead-out groove will happen automatically. So, so since this is the last track, we've already pre-programmed our software to have the lead out groove happen on its own, so. The very end of the song here. All right, here it comes. So here's the lead out groove. The head's gonna slowly move in towards the center of the record. Obviously leaving space for the label as well. You got about, it's four inches is, is the label size. So it will clear at least that. Moves in on its own and the head will lift up on its own as well. There it is. And then the head just returns back to its home position when the entire cut is done. I always turn on the anti-static fan after the cut just to make sure that we're still uh, you know, creating a nice low anti-static environment. Now that this record's done, I just unsecure it, pull it off, and then there it is. If you have any questions for us, please email us at lilelephantlathecuts at gmail.com. We'll be happy to answer any questions that you have.